Subway. How about Lizard? Okay, okay. You, I mean, we need to talk about the show, okay? We need to talk about the Reptile Super Show. You're being ridiculous over here. <laughs> Gosh, you're such a dong dong. I want to wear a hat. Okay, well, I want to talk about the show. Can we please talk about the show? Top of the morning, friends and family. Welcome to our beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece of the Reptile Super Show in Super Anaheim. Show! Super Show! So, check it out. Uh, this video is going to be three parts. First part, I'm going and to... And it's going to be uncut. No, it's not going to be uncut. This is a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece. Opposite of uncut. We got all kinds of really cool and footage. And it's going to be cut. There's going to be three parts to this video. I'm going to talk about some of the scarcity mindset that exists in retail reptile world. Some of the gripes about the Anaheim location of the Reptile Super Show. I'm going to talk about my favorite moments at the Reptile Super Show. And I'm going to give out a bunch of thank yous. So, Daddy, here, put the snake in the show. Snake's in the show. <laughs> and I was filming for Rami at the Reptile Super Show, getting footage for the Reptile Super Show channel. So there's going to be a lot of videos coming out over there, stuff that I filmed. And so I've got lots of great footage, tons of great footage to show on this video of the show. We got interviews with people around the show, checking out animals people have got, and just like all kinds of fun stuff. So this is going to be a jam-packed video with some great stuff. The cool thing about snakes that when they have a rat in their mouth, they don't bite anything. Except for the rat that are already biting. Yeah. Oh yeah, you learned that yes at the last video, huh? So I had a bunch of favorite moments at the show. And it's hard to just nail down a few, but I'm going to do my best. So one of my favorite moments was there was a girl that was at the show. I was actually interviewing her brother. Then I came to find out it was her birthday. She had apparently had a crested gecko that had passed away. And her dad surprised her with a surprise crested gecko on her birthday. A pretty special moment. Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> Are you gonna cry? <laughs> Her little baby crested gecko died. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like you? <laughs> I thought that was that was. Now it's my turn to talk. Okay. Um, deal with the gecko died. He stayed until they were too long, and I think a bunch of bugs got in there and got his eyes, and then he got so hot. But luckily, I think we're going to get a new deco that we're going to name Dio. I don't know if that's actually happening to Please. <laughs> Please. We're not going to name it Dio. Hi, Cecilia. Where are you? How how far did you come from today? Los Angeles. How many times have you been to Reptile Super Show? I would say about seven times. Seven times Reptile Super. What keeps what keeps you coming back to Reptile Super Show time and time again? Um, love for animals. My hobby, passion. Oh, what's your name? My name is Matt. Matt. Matt and this is Austin. Hi. How far did you guys come from today? Uh, we're in Riverside. It's about 30 minutes, 40 okay. minutes, depending on the traffic. Okay. So it's not too not too bad, but it's definitely worth it. And a lot of a lot of good vendors. A lot, of, a lot of fun stuff. Is your first Reptile Super Show? No, third or fourth. Third or fourth? Okay. Yeah, yeah, four or five years into this. What would you say keeps you coming back? Um, just spending time with the family, the kids, the cool the cool people here, the fun, cool animals. So, awesome. a lot of fun. Perfect, yeah. That's, that's perfect, cool. man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice you guys have fun with the rest of the day. Thank okay? you. AJ. AJ, uh, where did you come from? I'm from here, but I moved to Vegas, and now I'm kind of getting into breeding myself. Okay, is this your first reptile super show? No, luckily. Okay. I've been to plenty um, growing up, as well as now, kind of in the vending sense. Okay, How, uh, what brings you back to reptile super show? <sighs> Nostalgia and buying more snakes.
there's a channel called The Reach. It's my buddy Garrett Hartle of Reach Out Reptiles. They have a vlog channel called The Reach. You should go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. But he found the video where he went to the show and started out with a roly-poly that his daughter found in the backyard at his sister's house and traded up for higher and higher value animals to auction off at the U.S. auction at the end of the show. And that was a pretty cool story. Um, I... I don't want to ruin too much of it for you, but he tried to tap into me pretty hard. But the thing about U.S. Arc auctions is that animals tend to go for less than market value. So, and things that are like a bottle of sriracha went for like twelve hundred bucks or something. So, you know, T, you're donging all over the place. <laughs> Oh, maybe I did. So I had a lot of favorite moments at the show. There were a ton of them, and I, I had so many cool people that I talked to. Lots of people came up that were inspired by our videos, which was I was honored to talk and meet with so many people. It was a great show in that respect. There was one person in particular, though, this lady Susie, who came up and was just ecstatic. She she was just so full of joy. It was so palpable, the amount of joy this this lady was feeling, and it was just was a very special moment for me, too, at the show. And uh, that that was that was awesome. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. yeah. This is talk about some of the gripes that there were about the Anaheim Reptile Super Show. It's purely based around the location of the Super Show being in Anaheim. There's a lot more foot traffic versus um, people who are specifically at the show for reptiles being right next to Disneyland. You get a lot of people coming in. The other thing is that it's a little more expensive in the area. You know, parking is a little more expensive, a little harder to find parking. Uh, and so that, those, that's really it. Um, those, those few things. But because there are more families at the show and it's not so much people that are really dedicated to being in the hobby or dedicated reptile keepers already, it's not as big of a show for sales at the show. I would just like to encourage everybody who, who has a feeling like that, that a big part of these shows for me, and I feel like it's the most important part of these shows, is to go and show reptiles as a really cool animal. They've been so demonized over the years through movies and Hollywood and just all kinds of different places that, that reptiles have been dubbed as creepy, crawly, and scary, and dangerous, or evil. And I think it's our job at these shows to show the general public that that's not the case. And that's where that huge opportunity comes in from this show in particular, where you have all these families coming in, people that maybe had no interest in reptiles before, and it's up to us to be really good ambassadors and stewards to sh show these animals off in a great light. That is going to be something that solidifies the future of our hobby and industry, is getting those minds flipped around from thinking these animals are evil to thinking that they're really cool and awesome. Actually, you know, no, nobody actually said this to me. I just know it's a general it was a general gripe about the location in the past couple years. Um, at this show, I would say that everybody seemed to be embracing just that. So kudos to all you vendors out there who were just doing a great job of, you know, letting people hold animals and just being really good stewards for these animals to people who are attending the show who had no experience keeping reptiles yet. Notice that there was a lot of that happening, and I really appreciate everybody doing that because I think it's probably the most important thing to be doing at the show. You know, making sales is nice. But those will come down the line. You know, people get to see your name and booth out there. It's like kind of more networking rather than making a bunch of sh uh, sales at the show because the sales will come afterwards. You know, you get your name out there. All that being said, I, I would just I do want to thank everybody who did get an animal from us. We did pretty all, pretty all right. We sold about half the animals that we brought to the show, which was pretty awesome. You know, luckily we had a lot of things that weren't too expensive. So people who were getting their first time animals or people who weren't really serious into the breeding end of ball pythons. You know, there's we had a lot of sales there and, and met a lot of cool folks through that. And so I, I just want to thank everybody for all the support that we've gotten over the years. I want to uh, thank my buddy Adler for taking the camera, all those macro shots that you see. He was running around the Super Show all day Saturday getting macro shots for me. So I really appreciate that, Adler, that was awesome. I'd love to thank my parents 
for being there at the show. My mom on her birthday ended up being pretty special for her with uh, you know some of the things that happened at the U.S. Arc auction. That was awesome, but I, I wouldn't have been able to do what I was doing at the show if, if my parents hadn't been there. So thank you guys huge for that. I'd like to thank Rami for trusting me to be doing the filming for the show. It's a pretty huge honor to be asked to film for the show because the Reptile Super Show was my very first reptile show ever. So to go from you know being an attendee for the first time at any reptile show there and, and now to be hired on to actually do the video for the show, it's quite an honor. So thank you, Rami, for trusting me um, with that responsibility. Thanks to my buddy, Matt Bernardin, for taking up space at the booth. It would have felt really empty there without you, buddy. I want to touch back on that scarcity mindset that I was talking about. It's a, it's a mindset that exists in the world, that there's just not enough resources or that you have to get yours, make sure you have everything you need before you can take care of the needs of others. It's, uh, it's what I call a scarcity mindset or a famine mentality. And it has potential to tear apart the world. There's something that I've had stuck in my head for the last couple weeks that has really helped me get past that mentality because it's, it's natural it's natural for us humans to, to have that thought that's like our go-to it's kind of a survival instinct it's just it's in us but something that helps me with it is this the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod, your staff, they comfort me. And it was the first time seeing a snake die. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you guys for watching the video. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm losing tea. Where are you going, Leah? Oh, you're looking at the snakes? <laughs> Aloha. Thanks for watching. What's your name? Noah. How far did you come from today? About a 30 minute drive. So, what brings you back to the Reptile Super Show? You. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Reptile Super Show? Uh, the reptiles. <laughs>